So the South African Film and TV Awards, that's the SAFTAs, have announced their nominee list for this year's accolades. And the list includes an actress who's known for her compelling on-screen performances, I think show-stopping, many other descriptors you could throw there. Her career is spanning over 30 years, and she's recently known as Merin Jovu on Isono, as well as Grace Bengu on the Netflix hit series Savage Beauty. Who else? if not the legendary actress, Ntati Mushesh, who's with us in studio this morning on her work, her nomination, and everything else in between. I'm trying not to be oh. a fan girl. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Ayanda. Thank you so much for coming through. How are you doing? Thank you. I feel like I live here now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what people don't know is that um, <laughs> when we're not on air, you're telling me about the guests who have sat right there. Yes, Brajon Kani, Silo, Marke Kangume, and they've been there when I started my career. Um, I remember auditioning for Egoli with Sulomaki Gangube, and I remember playing John Carney's daughter in Nothing But The Truth. Wow, so this is a great full circle moment here on yes. the AM Report, where it should be. Completely. Thank you so much for coming through, and first things first, congratulations in order. Another soft nominations in the bag for Best Actress in the Telenovela. It follows, there we say, many other awards, quite frankly, and nominations. So, do they feel any different now than they did at the beginning of your career? An award is an award is an award. Yeah. I think you never get used to it. Um, Clive Morris actually alerted me that I've been nominated. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it. So when he said, um, congratulations on your nomination, it, I said, what are you talking about, Clive? And he said, for Mary Glovo. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then I went on the socials and there it was. Yeah. It, it, it always feels like a, a little, it's bubbles that run in your stomach because it's, wow, it's a validation from your industry, from your peers, from our supporters. Absolutely. And takes a lot of work to get there. And I think we, we shouldn't underestimate that. In a context where some people of your caliber have expressed concerns around perhaps who is now acting in the industry, who's now kind of getting the gigs, and whether or not the sanctity of the craft is being protected. Oh, Hayanda, you're asking a tricky one yeah. because, you know, there was that hashtag, open up the industry. How do you open up any industry? Can you say that about the accounting industry? Mm. How do you say open up the accounting industry when you know you've got to put in the work? You've got to go to university or to a college to study to be an accountant. So I think it's a concept that I really, really struggle with because um, when you get influencers taking on acting roles. There's a young girl from Vitz whose parents have sacrificed for her to go study drama at Vitz. And now she's sitting at home without work. Mm. So what are we going to do about the people that have studied and, and are really passionate about this craft? Um, yes, there's room for uh, Instagrammers and your influencers, but at the expense of who? Right. Because now... I'm afraid that what it means is uh, for any parent who's thinking of taking their child to a drama school, they're going to think twice because they're thinking, why am I putting it, why is my child going through four years of study when she can just be an instant um, famous person? Right. Yeah. And, you know, part of the discussion I was having with a few friends of mine who happened to be in the industry was around time, perhaps, that you now need to move away from honing the craft that you now need to contribute in becoming relevant on platforms like social media. Mm. You know, there's almost a, a split focus, as it were, for one person with one 24-hour cycle. There's only so much you can do. And I'm only highlighting this because what follows as a concern is the quality of work sometimes that comes out. Um, <laughs> yo, so I, I, I'm not going to mention names, but I was yeah. filming with a young man who was constantly on his phone. And, and when we started, phones were, were not allowed. You, there, there's no way you can allow cell phones on set. You cannot be in the moment and be acting and be present when you're constantly on social media because now every moment has to be documented. Every moment has to be photographed. What about what, 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 what the scene is about? Mm -hmm. So it stopped being about the scene and it's been about what's happening in the scene, within the scene, behind the scene, yeah, it, I find it very distracting. So if they could have no cell phone rules on set, for me, I'd be very happy. And yeah. I think we'd be a lot more productive because they, people are, not, are no longer present. So you find, even when you're not shooting, um, people are, 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 are 
are, are, sh are, are filming. So do, are we engaging? Mm. Are, are you and I actually engaging with each other or are we engaging for a camera? Because now it's become about what's Ayanda, what's Ayanda doing now? How is he asking the question, am I looking good? Is it my right angle? But you and I are not actually talking. Right. So how are you going to get to know the real in Tati if you live, you're seeing Tati through a camera lens? Because that's the thing about acting, right? It's actually got little to do with acting, but it's about becoming. Yes. In that moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's about being present. It's about taking every moment as you see it. Um, one day I'll probably take a role of a broadcaster. And I remember how Ayanda, how he sat. Oh, he did this with his hands. What did he do? How did he present himself? So everything becomes an opportunity. Everything is, it's, acting is about observation. Mm. So I'm constantly observing people. Sure. Speaking about opportunities, playing Mother Mary must have been quite the opportunity on his own, no? And I'm mentioning that because that's what you're actually nominated for in, uh, as Best Actress. I mean, I think there was fault for choice about which of the characters <laughs> to <laughs> hold in on with you. Um, what an opportunity it was to play that character. I mean, you quoted as saying she's intensely evil. She, as it were. Yeah. Interesting comment because I'm taught that <laughs> actors shouldn't judge their characters. <laughs> oh, you have to sit in judgment of them because it's in judging them that you then start making choices. Ah. So uh, I have empathy for Mary. I don't understand half the choices she makes. But she was intensely evil. But um, what is evil? Mm. Uh, because we love labeling she's a witch, she's evil, she's this, she's that. And yet Mary was driven by her trauma. Right. She experienced trauma as a teenager. And that trauma has influenced the decisions that she makes later in life. She doesn't have a healthy relationship with her kids because she grew up in an orphanage. So you can imagine. So how about we, we tell a story about how the, Mary's traumas have shaped the kind of person that she turned out to be. Mm. Yeah, it's, all, it's all about um, background, influence, um, experiences, what we go through, but of course then, because it's television, you also got to entertain your audience. Absolutely, yes. yeah, and you do a great job at that. In fact, um, I just finished watching Savage Beauty. My goodness. Oh, you did. I could, nothing could have uh, prepared me for that performance as well. Um, but <laughs> I also didn't know how to feel about Grace at the end, quite frankly. I mean, the easy interpretation is to see her as the villain, this woman who'll stop at nothing to get what she wants, but she's a victim of something else in a different way, like many women in this country. Imagine being married to a serial philanderer, yeah. Ayanda. Um, can you imagine how many Nyazis a Grace Bengu had to go through? Don Bengu has a, a Nyazi every single time. So she gets rid of the one, he takes on another one. And then, he, and then not only that, then he wants to make them his wives. And this is a woman who started the empire with him. Mm. So what are we saying to the Grace Bengus of the world? The women who stand behind the powerful man, and yet she's given no credit for the amount of work that she's put on. She's the brains behind the empire, not Don. Right. He's just the face. But Grace is the mastermind. And she's the empire builder, as I said. And so she's, she, her, once again, it's a, it's a character that is influenced by her circumstances, by, mind you, the trauma that she experiences in being with a man who is so unfaithful 24-7. And now the girls are getting younger and younger and younger. What, the next time, this one was 21, next time, what, she'll be 16? Right. And then it's statutory rape. Do you know what I mean? So, and then she's got an image to uphold. She's, she's built this empire. She's certainly not going to allow a little girl to take over an empire, and certainly not a, a, a child born out of wedlock. That's Mary's thinking. From as far as I can remember, uh, Mentati, you've always acted such intense characters. You know, there's, there's moments where you think to yourself, is this person okay, actually, given the intensity of this moment? How easy is it to shake it off? Um, after a day's work, getting uh, home, being a mother? I've learned to just walk away from it. Yeah. I'm, I'm such a goof on set, and it's very deliberate. The reason why I do that, it's so I don't take it too seriously. Because if I take it on, it'll really affect me. I wouldn't be able to drive back home. I wouldn't be able to function as a partner. I wouldn't be able to function as a mother, as a sister, as an aunt. Yeah. So I find moments where I can just shed it. But I've also learned the art of debriefing. So when we did... Um, 
when we did the intimate scenes, we had an intimacy coordinator, and they are fantastic to have on sets mm. because he then taught us the art of debriefing. And I realized you never taught that at drama school, how to walk away from a character. It's, it's find something, find music, um, um, talk to yourself and say, I'm no longer Grace Bengu, I'm now stepping into Ntati Mishesh. And literally, the power of words, right. and, and you can walk away from, okay, I'm not Grace Bengu now, but the minute you walk on set, okay, I'm Grace Bengu now, and I must leave Ntati Mishesh behind. Sure. And it's such an amazing and powerful exercise to do. I'm able to walk off, but I suppose it's also experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of experience, 30 years down the line, any characters that still take you back and you think to yourself, I don't know if I can pull this off. I don't know if I've, I can do this right. Uh, no, I, each character is different. Yeah. Each character is different. Um, maybe stage. There's a play we did quite a long time ago on, uh, it, um, called The Blacks, and it's an absurdist play. One of the most difficult plays, I think, even at the end of the run, we still didn't quite get what the play was about. <laughs> it, was, it was like a, a mind-blowing exercise, but, but I realized um, the researcher in me, the, the, the curios curious girl, in Tati always wants to dig deep and, and dismantle things and get to the bottom of things. Now you see why I'm intense. Right. I'm very intense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what it is. And, and, and it was such an amazing experience. It took us to Sweden and we worked with Swedish actors. We worked with American actors. But a, a play like that will never leave me because if I had to revisit the play now, a few, 20 odd years later, I'd probably see it very differently because now life has shaped me. Yeah. 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 Sure. I'm so glad that you're having a great experience with the work you do because we have such a great experience consuming it. Uh, this was a moment to put a spotlight on you to say kudos for the nomination. More than that, kudos for 30 years of what I think has been spectacular work in this industry. Thank, Thank you so you much for coming. Thank you so much, Ayanda, and yes. to your viewers as well. Absolutely. Tati Mushesh, legendary actress with us here in studio. As we mark a career, as I've mentioned, which really um, has been outstanding, to say the very least. Look out for the Safters, Crossing Fingers and everything else, uh, as we choose a side, as it were, <laughs> nominated for Best Actress once again. Congratulations and thanks for coming. Thank you. All right.